Lastly, and at the bottom of page seven, regarding this entire issue of exchanges, I wanted to make sure that my position uh, was out there. Uh, it has been uh, consistently very straightforward. Because of all the fiscal, regulatory, and political uncertainty that surrounded the exchange issue uh, last fall, specifically November, I agreed with the North Dakota Legislature's decision during the special session not to build and run a PPACA compliant exchange. Well, fast forward eight months and all the uncertainty still exists. Fiscal uncertainty still exists as it's unclear whether the exchanges will be able to pay for themselves or will become a money pit for states, as I talked about just a few minutes ago. The important deadline is January 1, 2015. They have to be self-sustaining after that. No federal money. So a state taking on this burden has to be sure that there's enough money coming in the door every month to pay for the expenses of the exchange on a month-to-month -month basis. This is not a situation like a, the exchange is a business, but it is not like a typical business. A typical business, when you open the doors, if you're not having as many customers as you thought, you have to make business decisions, including potentially reducing your employment, your staff. That can't happen in an exchange. What's happening January 1, 2014 in the exchange will have to happen July 1, 2014, October 1, 2014, January 1, 2015. The operations have to keep rolling, okay? So you can't make typical business decisions with the exchange if it's not bringing in enough money to support the expenses that are going out on a month-to-month -month basis. So that is a huge amount of fiscal uncertainty, which, by the way, is the biggest reason why, to date, you've seen a grand total of 14 states say that they're going to build and run their own exchange. And when you look at the list of states, it's a who's who of states that we don't have a lot in common with. California, Connecticut, Vermont, Rhode Island, Massachusetts, Hawaii, and on and on the list goes. Okay? Regulatory uncertainty still exists as all the rules and regulations regarding how the exchanges must be run have not been set by the federal government. And this is a very important point. We are two and a half years into this law. March 23, 2010 is when the law was passed. We still don't know what all the rules and regulations are regarding how the exchanges have to be run. They're hopeful to have all the final regs in place by the end of this year, by 2014. But here's the kicker. The law allows them to change the rules at any point in time after 2014. And any state that says it's going to build and run its own will have to comply with those rules and regulations. Okay? So we're in a situation where the rules of the game haven't been set yet and may change after a state were to make a decision. And then lastly, political uncertainty still exists as the law may not survive, depending on the results of the November elections. I'm sure most folks in the room already know this, but one of the uh, greatest impacts of the Supreme Court ruling was by it now saying that it's not the Commerce Authority that allows the penalty under the mandate, it's the Taxing Authority. There no longer needs to be 60 votes in the United States Senate to repeal any portion of the law that has a fiscal impact. You now only need a simple majority. So, if Mitt Romney were to beat Barack Obama this November, if the Republicans maintain control of the House and get to at least 51 votes in the Senate, it's very likely that substantial parts of this law, if not all of the law, will be gone in a few months. Okay? So further, uh, you know, my opinion has not changed that the North Dakota Legislature made the right decision not to build and run a PPACA compliant exchange. And then lastly, and this is to me the punchline, based on what we know now, even if the law survives after the results of the November elections, there is so much fiscal uncertainty regarding the exchanges that the best course of action among a bunch of horrible options available to the states would be to make the federal government prove that they can make the exchanges work. Let them prove to us and to other states that exchanges can actually work financially. If they can prove that, North Dakota could, if it wanted, take over the exchange. Representative Casper. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Commissioner, a couple of uh, comments because uh, I find your testimony very compelling. And, and as, as you know, and a lot of the committee members know, uh, in the, before the special session, I supported a state exchange. I have since changed my opinion, largely based on some of the things you said today and some of the research I've been doing. 
But one of the key things that I found uh, to support what you're saying, and I never did question it, is uh, the Federal Exchange guidelines, and, and I have some handouts I'm going to distribute to the committee today before we adjourn. Uh, under Section 1311K, this was the key uh, sentence to me. An exchange may not establish rules that conflict with or prevent the application of regulations promulgated by the Secretary. Therefore, regardless of what we may do better in North Dakota, if they don't like it or it conflicts or they don't give us permission, we're, we're done. Correct. And the other, the comment I would make uh, for Senator Glassheim's question in, in the uh, articles I'll hand out, here is, here is <laughs> some definite numbers in this article. And it's from Twyla Brace from uh, St. Paul. The, co the annual cost uh, for the Massachusetts uh, connector is $30 million. The Oregon estimate is $36 million. And the Minnesota estimate, because they're proceeding with their own state exchange, is at this point from 40 to $80 million per year to, to administer their state exchange. So the handouts which I have will support that data and give you information and, and sightings for it. Good morning, Chairman Kaiser and members of the Health Care Revo uh, Reform Review Committee. My name is Tammy Turnus, Policy Advisor to Governor Dalrymple. I am here to, today to provide information regarding the Governor's position on the Health Benefits Exchange and Medicaid expansion provisions of the Affordable Care Act. As we all know, the State House of Representatives voted 64 to 30 to defeat efforts to establish a state-based Affordable Care Act mandated exchange. Since that time, the Governor is not persuaded that there is any reason to alter the course adopted by the House action. Therefore, he remains opposed to the establishment of a state-based exchange. The U.S. Supreme Court ruled that the federal government cannot mandate states to expand their Medicaid programs. Several critical questions remain to be answered before states can, be, can determine best how to proceed in light of the court's decision. The Department of Human Services has submitted numerous questions to the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services and will analyze responses as they are received. This concludes my testimony.